If you've been following football for even three seconds, you've probably heard the name Moises Caicedo about 15 times within those three seconds. So today we'll be talking about the recent rise of the young Ecuadorian midfielder, and also the transfer saga that's been recently happening. By the way, just a reminder for about the third time, I got a new Twitter, so if you'd like to follow the Twitter for any video updates and all that kind of stuff, the handle is right here. There will also be a link to my Twitter in the description. Moises Caicedo was born in Santo Domingo, Ecuador's fourth largest city by population. His family wasn't well off, and to add on to that, he was the youngest of 10 siblings. Growing up, Caicedo played football on scrubland pitches, where goals were marked out by piles of stones. Then one morning, when he was striking a ball against a wall next to his house, Moises caught the attention of local football coach Ivan Guerra. He impressed Guerra so much that the coach would ask Caicedo to join his team, Barcelona, an Ecuadorian first division side. Guerra became somewhat of a godfather to young Moises and would do anything to help him. The coach bought the kid football boots, paid for his bus fares, and even helped the family when they couldn't afford food. Caicedo started out as a striker, but eventually found his spot in the midfield. Soon after, he joined the Academy of Espoli, a club that belongs to a police academy in the nation's capital. Then in 2016, Caicedo joined Independiente del Valle's academy, an academy that at the time contained multiple players who were representing Ecuador at youth level. But despite the potential he had, Moises Caicedo didn't really stand out at first. However, However, he was like a sponge soaking up endless bits of knowledge as he was determined to improve with every training session. But then unfortunately, just a year into his time in the academy, Moises ruptured a cruciate ligament in his knee in 2017. It was a tough period for the teenager to deal with, but once Caicedo came back 10 months later, he was back to his best and more. In 2019, Caicedo starred in both an invitational youth tournament in Spain and the Copa Mitad del Mundo, an under-18 competition for South American clubs. By the way, the coach who managed the youth team at the time was none other than Miguel Angel Ramirez. That's right, I'm talking about the Charlotte FC legend himself. Ahora... Miguel was always impressed with Caicedo from the very start. The head coach loved Moise's physicality, athleticism, and even called the midfielder the octopus because he was able to win the ball wherever and whenever. Moise originally deployed just in front of the defense due to his tactical intelligence and good ability on the ball. However, he was later moved further forward after the man he was supposed to replace proved undroppable. So instead, the young midfielder moved up to a number 8, and since then, he hasn't changed. Caicedo made his senior debut in 2019, and without any time to adapt, he immediately immediately broke through as the best player in the squad. In fact, he was so crucial to the squad that in 2020, now head coach Ramirez flew him back from a U20 Copa Libertadores match to play against local rivals LDU. Caicedo then flew back to Paraguay the following day to help the U20s win the championship. By the end of 2020, Moises had skyrocketed above his peers and was even playing for Ecuador's senior team. And once more, Moises was gaining attention, but this time from European clubs eager to sign the young midfielder. Scouts from the likes of Club Bruges, Brighton, Milan, Manchester United, and Chelsea all were sent to watch young Moises. However, one thing that isn't usually pointed out is the lack of links between South American clubs and European clubs. This leaves a lot of uncertainty when it comes to transfers, and when uncertainty is present, there's many ready to capitalize on it. Normally, clubs will give agents a mandate to sell their own player. That way, the club has a degree of negotiating power. But as a player starts rising in stock, a swarm of agents will offer them exclusive contracts that promise things like better negotiated deals. This has been a thing all over the world for decades now. But when FIFA deregulated agents back in 2015, it practically meant anyone could be an agent. Which I don't think I need to explain why that could possibly be a bad thing. At the time, Moises Caicedo was signed with an Ecuadorian agency by the name of Cancha, who were already linked with Independiente. However, as Caicedo's stock rose, agents eager to profit flocked to the player like Asian Americans to this shirt. But agents weren't only trying to reach him, they were also offering deals to his family members. A family which consisted of 10 siblings and 25 nephews. So while Caicedo didn't sign any deals, two of his own family members did. So Caicedo was now under three different agencies which pretty much deemed his own club irrelevant in any deals. As a result of this, Moises indirectly gained a reputation amongst European scouts and directors. The easy part was finding him. The hard part was going through the labyrinth to sign him. And because of that, most clubs actually walked out. Those who didn't had some kind of relationship within South American football. One of which was Brighton, and of course they would. Judging from past signings, they probably have links to scouts in f***ing Greenland. In this case, though, Brighton had ties with Independiente and also Caicedo 
Magneto's original agency. So in the end, they were the only club able to go through the maze and signed Moises Caicedo in 2021 for 4.5 million euros. After making about three appearances for Brighton's youth team in Premier League 2, he made his senior debut in the FA Cup and recorded an assist. Then, at the beginning of the 2021-22 season, Caicedo was loaned out to Belgian club Beerschot. At this point, his physical condition and confidence had taken a dip, but now he would be able to get way more opportunities to learn and adapt to the intensity in Europe. Quickly, the young Ecuadorian worked on his fitness, and within just a few weeks, he was the best player in the squad. Manager of Beerschot at the time, Javier Torrente, praised Caicedo's game, saying, Every time he touched the ball, he showed that he was a special player. He always imposed himself on the game, winning the ball when it was there to be won, and when he had possession, he didn't lose it easily. You don't see that combination in many players. He was on a different level. Originally, the loan was for a season, but Brighton decided to call Moises back up in January 2022. Caicedo then made his Premier League debut in April 2022, where he showed why exactly Brighton went through the mess of signing him in the first place. Deployed in a deep-lying position, Moises was all over the pitch comfortable with the ball, and even assisted a goal. Caicedo would go on to start the remaining seven games, and then scored his first goal for the club against Manchester United. Into the following season, Moises carried where he left off, and flourished. Caicedo then went into the World Cup, had great performances, and even scored a goal. By January 2023, top clubs were frothing for the 21-year-old. And then once again, in came the agents. At the beginning of the month, Caicedo signed with the Football Division Agency, an agency already working with another promising Ecuadorian in Piero Hincapié. This same agency released a statement on Caicedo's Instagram about how he wanted to leave Brighton. However, Brighton were not ready to lose their star just yet and rejected a 70 million bid from the Gunners. To let him breathe a bit, the club rested Caicedo until the beginning of February and manager Roberto De Zerbi asked fans not to criticize the Ecuadorian midfielder, especially since it seemed like the agency wanted the move more than he did, which definitely seemed to be the case because just a month later, Caicedo signed an extension until 2027. Nonetheless, Moises didn't let the noises get to him. I, uh, I do weddings and um, also parties. The midfielder put in amazing performances during the second half of the season and won both Player of the Season and Player's Player of the Season for Brighton. Keep in mind, his competition that season were a multitude of other players that had broken out that season, including Per Vesi Stupinian, Alexis McAllister, and Kaoru Mitoma. Moises was already very mobile with being all over the pitch, and his range of passing was quite accurate. But what made him stand out in 2022-23 was his ability to be an elite winner of the ball with his anticipation and in fact, Caicedo finished the 2022-23 season with 99 tackles, the second most behind Joao Palinha. And once again, just like previous years, top clubs were eager to get this man's signature. Brighton had no plans to sell Caicedo, as Roberto De Zerbi actually wanted to build a team around him. However, in the case that there was an offer so good Brighton couldn't refuse, they'd let him go. But it'd have to be a lot because the reported valuation for the Brighton midfielder was 115 million euros. And while that sounds Sounds insane, you have to remember, club owners are insane. Throughout the last two windows, there's been a lot of links between Chelsea and Moises Caicedo, and in this window alone, the interest has just skyrocketed. But there was no formal bid until mid-July when Chelsea offered 81 million, to which Brighton immediately rejected. Chelsea tried 92 million a week later, and again Brighton said f no. If the Blues wanted to acquire Caicedo, they'd need to hurry, because Brighton had actually set a deadline for when clubs could bid for Caicedo. So fast forward to the final night before Brighton's deadline, Todd Bully and Chelsea cooked up a 115 million bid. Having finally met Brighton's valuation, the deal was sealed. Moises Caicedo would be a player for Chelsea Football Club. That was until Liverpool decided to bid 127 million right before midnight. That's right, despite the Blues being frontrunners throughout the chase for Caicedo, it was Liverpool who had the final say with a British transfer record bid. Oh my god! That's right, despite the Reds having their bid accepted, Moises Caicedo himself says he wants to join Chelsea instead. However, in order for that to happen, Todd Bowley would have to eclipse Liverpool's offer. And he did just that. Chelsea bid 133 million euros, a British record transfer fee once again, and of course, Brighton accepted. So it's finally official after weeks of insanity. Chelsea has landed their biggest targets and Moises Caicedo is now a Chelsea player until 2031. Excluding Liverpool, great for all parties, but even better is that thanks to a sell-on clause, Independiente receive over 20 million from the sale. Now looking back at this whole transfer saga, I, I can't lie, a couple things were a little 
fishy. Because before Liverpool's bid, it was actually reported that Caicedo was open to joining Liverpool if they bid. But of course, once Liverpool actually made a bid, Caicedo changed his mind. Now, this could have just been Caicedo just having a simple change of mind. That's fine. But I also have a feeling that his agents may have played a part in pulling the strings just to get more money. And under those strings, of course, were the two dumbass owners at Liverpool and Chelsea. I feel like you could sell a cup of lemonade to Todd Bowley for over 20 million if you tried. Either way though, is Moises Caicedo worth 133 million? No, I mean, that's so obvious, of course not. But you have to remember that Brighton weren't even planning to sell him. But because Todd Bowley is peak American 1% and doesn't even really think about what he buys, um, here we are. Probably a good time to mention this, by the way, also. Um, Todd Bowley has spent nearly a billion in the last three transfer windows. And they're still linked with Romeo Lavia. All that aside though, at just 21 years old, Moises Caicedo has a lot of room to grow, and it'll be interesting to see how he fares in the new youth revolution happening at Chelsea. So that was the rise of Moises Caicedo. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe I'll do another one like this later on. I don't know. Love to hear what you guys think about the Moises Caicedo deal. Do you think he'll flourish at Chelsea, or will he be a bust? Let me know. But of course, a massive shout out to all our patrons, including Janusz Balas, Stin, Miliwe009, Adnesia Makalakom, Aldipu, Alex Rod, Araisan, Carlos Anaya, Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Joa Cavallo, Josh Budd, Marco Fujimoto, Miguel Munoz, Return Fire, Rory Burns, Slider Kit, Snifferx, Takaoka Fan, Tomicus, Victor, Chris Damasena, Chris Visconsi, Q90 Champs 2022, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Joe Paricio, Lucian von Kreuz, Michael Nista, Nish, Patrick Barley, President Pulsic, Rowan Cookie, Sylvia Citrus, subscribe to Tenday Tim, Unbroken Persona, and Valencia 14. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you want, follow my Instagram if you like, follow my TikTok, trying to get to 20,000 there, and of course you can follow my semi-active Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.